Well, Watchtower has reached a new low. Let me tell you about it. Hello and welcome to the JW Thoughts channel. My name is Wally and today we are going to be looking at a article that was posted today about is the world coming to an end and what is the apocalypse? And I felt compelled to actually talk about this because it has some of the worst logic and blanket statements in Watchtower and we will get to that shortly. But first, before uh, please drop a like on this video. It helps it get out to more people on YouTube. For as many likes as this video gets, if you add a zero onto the end of that, it's about how many views it gets. So the more likes it gets, the more views uh, that we can get out, and then the channel can grow, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we can get reach more people with the good message of the JW Thoughts channel. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for everyone joining me. So let's get into it. Hey, I pointed, so that means it's officially time to go. But first, I think I have to burp. <sighs> Hello, and welcome to the JW Thoughts channel. My name is Wally, and today we are going to be talking about the apocalypse what it means and is it the end it'll be a very brief video uh, because the article uh, was posted on jw.org today and it had some of the worst reasoning and logic that i've seen in recent articles so god what is with the burps Ugh. <sighs> Hello and welcome to the JW Thoughts channel. My name is Wally and today I noticed an article talking about is the world coming to an end and what is the apocalypse and it had some of the worst logic and reasoning that I've seen in a while from Watchtower. So I thought I would make a quick video and talk about it. But before we get into it, please drop a like on this video. If you add a zero to the amount of likes that the video gets, it's how many views it gets as well. So the more likes that we can get, it'll help it get out to more people on YouTube. So if you're enjoying this content and if you'd like to help the channel grow, please drop a like, subscribe to the channel. With all of that being said, let's get into it. So this article is entitled, Is the World Coming to an End? And What is the Apocalypse? So I'll just start reading it right away. What comes to your mind when you hear the word apocalypse? You might think of a global catastrophe, perhaps one that ends all life on Earth. Some believe that the world is heading towards such a disaster, especially when they read news reports like the following. Uh, nuclear war, whether started by design blunder or simple miscommunication, is a genuine possibility. So, wasn't the Cuban Missile Crisis Correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't the Cuba, Cuban Missile Crisis the closest that we've ever been to a nuclear war? And wasn't that 50 years ago? And Watchtower claims that things in the time of the end progressively get worse and worse and worse. So it, it appears that we've reached a somewhat of a crescendo and a plateau at the very least. But I would ca call it, you know, a slight descent. Uh, in, in recent years. And sure, there's always the threat of nuclear war, but can we say that it's progressively getting worse? I don't think so. And if you would like to disagree with me, uh, read the book Command and Control. It's a very interesting, I can't remember exactly who uh, wrote it. I think it's like Schlosser or something. I probably should have looked it up, but yeah, if you type into Amazon Command and Control, it's a very interesting book, and it will inform you about America's history when it comes to nuclear firearms. Moving along to their next point, the past decade has seen an astonishing run of record-breaking storms, forest fires, droughts, coral bleaching heat waves, and floods around the world by the National Geographic. What did Jesus say would actually be um, a sign of the time of the end? Did it have anything to do with climate change? But their point is basically climate change. 
That wasn't a, Jesus didn't say when he was giving the sign of the times that, oh, you would experience, you know, carbon emissions building up to the point where the, you know, the earth heated up and it caused all of these deleterious effects. That wasn't in Matthew. I'm sorry. So the one thing that they could say is actually accurate in this whole article is the thing that the Bible doesn't actually talk about, which is just hilarious to me. And then uh, the last one is locust swarms in Africa are worst in decades. They might be the worst in decades, but they are not the worst in the history of mankind. Uh, I mean, e even just in America in the 1800s, I don't know if it was the worst in human history, but far worse than anything the world has seen in hundreds of years. And that was, I think, like 1864, 1867, something like that, when locusts just swarmed and people said it looked like a storm cloud and there was trillions, trillions. I think one estimate said there was a 25 million tons of locusts that were swarming and eating crops. That was the worst that the world has seen. And that was back in the 1800s. So again, I have to disagree because the point that they're about to make is that the world has been, been getting worse since 1914. And all of these things, the only one that is accurate is climate change. But that's the one thing that the Bible doesn't actually talk about. <sighs> okay, so, uh, will planet Earth come to an end? No, God's word, the Bible, assures us that the Earth will remain forever. Rather than destroying the Earth that he created, God will bring to ruin those ruining the Earth. This is interesting to me because this is plucking um, the minority of scriptures. So, if you want to look at what the Bible says about the history, or the uh, future, sorry, of planet Earth, the majority of scriptures that you find are going to say that it's going to be destroyed forever. Burned with fire, all of that good stuff. Um, uh, just a couple quick examples. Matthew 24 and Mark 13 both say heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. 2 Peter 3, 7, but, his, but, his, but by his word, the present heavens and earth are being reserved for fire, kept for the day of judgment and the destruction of ungodly men. Um, uh, second Peter three, 10 and 12, but the Lord, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief in which the heavens will pass away with a roar. The elements will be destroyed with intense heat and the earth and its works will be burned up. So there's more verses that talk about the earth being completely destroyed with fire than there are saying that it will be preserved and stand a time indefinite. And the ones that say that it will stand a time indefinite are generally poetic. But again, this it, that's irrelevant in this case because at that point, when people read this, they're saying, well, that's figurative. But when it's saying that the earth will stand forever, well, that's literal. And as soon as you do the old yellow highlighter and green highlighter one is literal one is figurative once you basically can lie to yourself and say that the bible gives you permission to tell what is going to be figurative and what is going to be literal i don't understand why you're even using the bible at that point because you may as well just make up whatever religion makes you comfortable uh, you, you, you can just make up your own religion at that point because there's no reason using the Bible. Because if you can say, well, the Bible says this, but what it really means is this. You may as well just write your own religious textbook because that's literally what you're doing by saying that these things aren't literal. They are figurative. When will the end come? Uh, the Bible does not actual, or does not tell us exactly when the end will come. However, it does indicate that the end is close. Uh, the Bible foretells events such as wars, food, sorted, food shortages, epidemics, powerful earthquakes would occur in one place after another. Again, these things have always been on planet Earth, and they have been worse in the past. It's recency bias to say that the world is worse than it's ever been. 
Um, people in general would display extreme selfishness, selfishness. For example, they would be lovers of money, unthankful, without self-control. Again, I think that the world is generally trending to becoming more nuanced. And the farther we move away, away from religion, the closer we get to a more civilized society. And I, 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 I'm not saying this as like a racist thing. It has nothing to do with the people that live there. But where is a more peaceful place to live? in in the where is your life less likely to be taken from you by some religious extremist versus you being able to establish establish yourself in the community and be able to participate and the community also gives back to you i, I know i'm using a lot of qualifiers here but i'm just going to come out and say it would you rather live in north africa or the middle east would you rather live in Scandinavia or in, you know, Europe? Okay. Now, what is the rate of people in North Africa or in the Middle East that are religious? Okay. What is the rate of people that are religious in Scandinavia or in Europe? It, it's... It's actually pretty clear that the, the world becomes more progressive the farther away you move from, move from religion. Do you have to eliminate it? By all means, no. But the farther you move away from like extremist religions, the more peaceful the world will be. Might be a hot take, probably going to need to cut that out, but that's fine. Welcome to YouTube. Uh, next up, it says... And this is really the thing that motivated me to even make this video in the first place. Many people agree that since the year 1914, world conditions have matched what the Bible foretold and that the end is near. I'm so used to hearing experts say, historians say, scholars say, they suggest. Watchtower isn't even trying anymore. They're, they're literally not trying. They're just saying many people agree that since the year 1914, what, what has Watchtower come to? They've gotten to the point where they're just like, you know, screw doing research, screw actually trying to make any point whatsoever. Let's just say, Hey, uh, many people agree that this is the case. And that's what we think too. Did, did, did they believe it? Like, who is going to read this and just be like, oh yeah, many people do agree. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not a, a false statement, but may, maybe they have to do that because most people would disagree. So they just have to say, well, many people would agree, but most people that have actually studied would disagree would disagree with that statement that you made so just say well you know eight people were in a room and seven of them said yeah things have been worse since 1914 none of them were experts none of them have ever read a book in their lives but you know many people agree oh so anyway uh that's where we'll stop right there for fear of this video going on too long uh just a quick one that i wanted to get out but i thought that this article was absolutely hilarious and how bad that the Jehovah's Witnesses have have gone when it comes to actually making or trying to make a logical or reasonable point. It's literally to the point in their literature where they don't have to back up anything with evidence. They don't have to prove anything. They can just say, Many people agree with this fictitious date that we've established in a book that can't be proven and using a chronology that actually doesn't work with history. Uh, I'm, I'm referring to 607 and that's how they get to 1914. So you just have all of this crap, you know, tied together. And their point is what? The end is close. We don't know when it will be, but it's getting worse since 1914 and all of its absolute crap. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you all on Saturday where we are going to have my five minutes.
to leave the Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, what was I going to call that video? Yeah, crap. <laughs>